Greetings, fellow classic TV fans. After the Beatles cartoon blazed a Saturday morning trail, the Jackson 5 did their own. It aired in 1971 and 72 for 23 episodes and was fittingly on ABC. Although it was a kids show, it was also great publicity for the group as each episode featured their hit songs. It was co-produced by Motown Productions and Rankin and Bass, famous for their classic Christmas specials. Reportedly, the real Jacksons were too busy to voice their characters, but they did pose for their portraits used in the beginning and ending of the show. The legendary voice actor Paul Frees voiced many of the characters, including their manager, Barry Gordy. And it's interesting that the first episode featured the real voice of Diana Ross playing herself. As Michael's pets, there was Rosie the Snake, and with a nod to their musical hero, his rats, Ray and Charles. Apparently, Ben was eyeing a movie career. In the mid-80s, it was re-aired, inspired by Michael's huge success and a Jackson's reunion tour. And for ABC, that decision was as simple as do re mi Greetings, fellow classic TV fans. The Flintstones parodied a fair share of classic TV and movie stars. They would spoof celebrities like Cary Grant and Rock Hudson, but with their names bedrockized as Gary Granite and Rock Quarry. The real-life Anne Margaret voiced her character Anne Margrock, as did Tony Curtis as, you guessed it, Stony Curtis. Classic TV was represented with the real-life voices of Liz Montgomery and Dick York from Bewitched. And their new neighbors, the Gruesomes, loosely resembled the Addams Family. But the Flintstones also dabbled in the world of popular music. For example, there was the Wayouts, who clearly spoofed the Beatles. And also, the Bo Brummel Stones, who in this case not only looked like the Bo Brummels, but actually performed their hit song, Laugh Laugh. But then there was the un-bedrock eyes named of a legendary songwriter, Hoagie Carmichael. And he was on the show to perform the Yabba Dabba 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 Doo song. So with this musical element interjected into the Flintstones, it could possibly be what introduced myself and many others to the world of rock and roll. Greetings, fellow classic TV fans. So what do Speed Racer and Elvis Presley have in common? Quite a bit. The Japanese animated cartoon was produced in the late 60s and was highly influenced by Elvis's movie, Viva Las Vegas. That movie was a big hit in Japan and the creators drew off the look of Elvis the race car driver to create their character, Speed Racer. But it goes further than that. For example, Anne Margaret's role as the helicopter flying love interest of Elvis Rusty. She clearly influenced Speed Racer's helicopter flying love interest, Trixie. The Mach 5 seemed to be a mashup between two cars that Elvis actually drove in his race movies, the first being Viva Las Vegas, and another one from the movie Spin Out. Speaking of Spin Out, didn't you love when Speed Racer would lose control of the Mach 5? And then with a mere push of the button on the steering wheel, all was well again. But with all this borrowing aside, it was still a great cartoon with great storytelling that eventually made its way to the big screen as well. Greetings, fellow classic TV fans. Underdog ran from 1963 to 72 with 124 episodes. And being in the top 50 of TV Guide's greatest cartoon characters of all time, just where did he come from? Created by a New York ad man in a campaign for the kids' serial giant General Mills, Underdog was the brainchild of William Watts Biggers, whose nickname was Buck. Yep. Buck Biggers, who also wrote the awesome theme song. With his ad partner Chet Stover, they were vying for a special primetime Saturday morning TV slot. But they had competition. Their similar adversary had firmly established itself in the cartoon world two years earlier. And it was known as the Rocky and Bullwinkle Show. Buck claims to have said that up against this competition, we're the underdogs. And the name stuck. And the rest was cartoon history. With the success of their superhero canine and the full team of Biggers, Stover, Tred Covington, and Joe Harris, the production company Total Television was born. Greetings, fellow classic TV fans. One of my all-time favorite Hanna-Barbera cartoons started in a primetime orbit alongside Johnny Quest and its Stone Age counterpart, the Flintstones. I'm talking about the Jetsons. It ran on ABC from September 1962 to March of 63 before it found its home in syndication as a Saturday morning cartoon. This animated sitcom science fiction series consisted of 24 episodes and was originally aired on Sunday nights. The Jetsons has the distinction of being the first ever ABC program to be broadcast in color. Astro, I don't think we're in Kansas anymore. Where the Flintstones were inspired by the Honeymooners, the Jetsons drew its inspiration from the comic strip Blondie, which were vastly popular comedy films, too. And as a matter of fact, the character of Jane Jetson was actually voiced by the Blondie actress herself, Penny Singleton. The show featured some other legendary voice talent as well. There was Mel Blanc as Mr. Spacely, Don Messick as Astro, and Dawes Butler as Elroy. 
Judy was voiced by Janet Waldo, who also did Penelope Pitstop and Josie from Josie and the Pussycats. Like Johnny Quest, the Jetsons would also, over time, appear on all three major networks. And it went on for decades, as apparently Jane couldn't stop that crazy thing. Greetings, fellow classic TV fans. From 1968 to 70, the Banana Splits Adventure Hour put out a total of 31 episodes. Hanna-Barbera incorporated the brilliance of Sid and Marty Croft and soon-to-be high-profile director Richard Donner. One of the fan-favorite aspects of the show was its short segments. There was Danger Island, featuring a young Jan Michael Vincent, and the legendary stuntman Kim Kahana. Also, a brief run of the series, Microventures. I personally enjoyed the two fully animated shows, The Three Musketeers and Arabian Nights. Voice actors for both cartoons featured a few familiar faces from classic TV. The Three Musketeers' Athos was voiced by none other than Dr. Smith himself, the legendary Jonathan Harris. And speaking of Lost in Space, D'Artagnan was voiced by actor Bruce Watson, cousin of June Lockhart. He also appeared in the Star Trek premiere episode, Man Trap. Orthos was played by Barney Phillips. You may remember him from Dragnet or as the three-eyed alien from the Twilight Zone episode, Will the Real Martian Please Stand Up? Aramis was the iconic Don Messick, a staple voice actor for Hanna-Barbera cartoons, most notably Scooby-Doo. Arabian Nights had its fair share of TV faces, too. There was Jay North, aka Dennis the Menace, in the role of Prince Turhan. Ventriloquist Sherry Lewis, best known for her sock puppet Lamb Chop, voiced Princess Nida. There were also the screen veterans John Stevenson as Farik the Magician and Frank Gersel as Racine the Strong. Bez the Beast was voiced by Henry Corden. He eventually inherited the role of Fred Flintstone from the late Alan Reed. And finally, Paul Frees, aka Boris Badenoff, among countless other voice characters, played the villain Vangor. With a perfect mixture of live action and animation, including music, the Banana Splits Adventure Hour truly did cover all the entertainment bases.